Hello, welcome to Let's Learn C++, size of 1.3. Today I'm going to teach you about integers and the basic input commands. Uh, but first we're going to start out with, with, with integers, and I'm going to teach you all about variables. Before we do this, I do have two vocabulary words for you. First one is integer. We should all know what an integer is, but just in case, an integer is a whole number. This means that there are no decimal places in it. So maybe like 2, or 1, or 3, or negative 2. It can be positive, negative, as long as there are no decimal places. So 1.1 is not an integer. So the second one is a variable. And a variable is a data construct that is used to store values that are used around the program. So we can create what is called a variable, and then we can store a value inside of the variable. And then it stays inside the variable, and then we can access it later on and pull the value back out and use it in the program. Okay, so input. That's what this lesson is all about. It is another integral part of programming. In the last lesson, we looked at output. Now, knowing output, it's easy to imagine a program with output and without input. It's called a movie. Movies are great, but wouldn't you much rather control what goes on in the movie? I would. So that's what input is for. We get output from it, and we can input what we want it to do. First, I'm going to... Uh, teach you about variables and how to make them and everything. So, the first variable we're going to learn about is an integer. In fact, that's the only one we're going to learn about in this lesson. We'll learn about others in, in uh, later lessons. But, so you can see this first line right here inside the main function, int space my var parentheses 5 parentheses. So, there's a method to declaring variables. And the way you do it, there's there's two parts to this, or rather three actually. So the first part, you can see we have int. This is the data type. Oops. I'm going to connect it with a dash. So the first part is the data type. And the second part is called the name. And then the third part is the initial, there we go, initial value. So we can divide this line into three pieces. The data type, int, the name, my var. Oh, what am I doing? My bad. The data, sorry, the name is my var. And then the initial value, God, why do I keep doing that? Is five. And the initial value you can see is in between the parentheses. So, data type, int. The, an int, as we just learned, is an integer. So we're creating a variable that is of the type integer. We can only store integers in there. So in other words, we can only store numbers with no decimals. So if I tried to say 5.7856, that wouldn't work. I wouldn't be able to store that. In fact, it, it wouldn't produce an error. The only thing it would do is chop off all this. It would chop off all the decimals and just keep the 5. So really, there's no point in doing all the decimals. Just put a 5. So int, we name it my var. So everything has to have a name, so we can access it later on. And then we give it an initial value of 5. So then down here, we're gonna, we have an, another integer called my second var. And we set it equal to 6. So you can see I did two different methods here. There's two different methods to give a variable an initial value. You can put the initial value in parentheses to initialize the value. Or you can create the variable and then put an equal sign and put, a, and put the, uh, the initial value. So really, this is saying my second var equals 6. So we're storing a 6 inside my second var. So now my var has a, has a value of 5, and my second var has a, has a value of 6. And then this second line here, my second var equals my var. This is just a way of transferring values back and forth. So I'm just showing you that you don't have to put or an actual number in there. You can put another value that is an integer. So my second var is an integer my var is an integer, so we can set them both equal to each other. So what that's going to do is it's going to store the value of my var inside of my second var. It's just going to transfer it over, or really actually it's going to copy it. So that way they'll both have the same value. And then this last line, we're, we're uh, changing the value of my var to 7. So when I run this, you can see it's going to output the values and tell you which one it is with these couts. My var 7, my second var 5. So, let's trace this through the program. My var starts out at 5, my second var starts out at 6. Then my second var gains the value of my var, so my second var is now equal to 5. 
my second var equals 5. And then we change the value of my var to 7. So now we have my var is equal to 7, and my second var is equal to 5. So if we look in the program, the output, my var 7, my second var 5, that's exactly correct. That's exactly what it's outputting. So that's how, that's really basic how variables work. Um, I'm going to show you how to input with the variables. Uh, I'm just going to copy this over. I've already typed it out and everything, and I know you don't want to watch me type out a new program, so might as well copy it. All right, so we have an, an integer called my var equals zero. And let's see, why is this doing this? That's why. I don't know why these quotation marks aren't real quotation marks. That's weird. Anyway, so we have a variable called my variable, and we set it equal to zero. So my variable has a value of zero. And then we're C outing, we're prompting the user input a number. So then we're going to input with C in. So C out, remember is the output command, console out is output. C in, console in is input. Now, remember with the output, we use the left bitwise uh, shift operator going to left. It points out of the program because it's C out. Well, now we have a right bitwise shift operator that points in to the program. So basically, output, you point out, input, you point in. All we're doing is reversing the arrows. So we have cn greater than, greater than my variable, which is the variable that we created up here. So what this means is whatever the, the user inputs into the console is going to be stored inside of my variable. That's all this is saying. We're going to take input from the user and store it inside of that variable. Whatever variable is after cn, we're storing it in there. And then you can see this next line, cn.ignore. There's a really long-winded explanation as to why I'm using that, but, if, but I'm just going to skip it for now, and maybe I'll tell you later or something. I think I'll probably make a text lesson on the forum about it, but uh, for now... Um, you can Google it if you want, but whenever you use cn, always put a cn.ignore after it. Otherwise, you'll get errors with everything else about cn. So put a cn.ignore after your cns. So then we're going to say c out your number is, and we're going to output the value of my variable. So the way to output a value of a variable is just like this. So we did C out less than less than, and we do just like we normally do with this. And then we separate it with another left bitwise shift, and we put the name of the variable, and it'll output whatever is stored inside the variable. Now make sure that there's not quotation marks around it. And then we end the line, and then C and I get pauses it. So let's run this program. Input a number. So we have input a number. Um, input 4. Your number is 4. So you can see that with this program, we inputted a number and it saved it inside of my variable. And then it output your number is 4. 4 is exactly what I put in, so we can see very well that it stored the value inside the variable. So that's proof as to that right now. Um, that really is all I have for this right now. And already been nine minutes. Wow, that was a quick lesson. Okay, um, well that's all I have for you for this lesson, so make sure you tune in next time, and I will see you next time.